My name is Ashley Shannon, and I'm here with my co-host, Carrie McAvoy, and you're listening to the How to Publish Your Book podcast, where we're turning writers into authors. And today we're going to talk about workflows, or lack thereof, um, depending on who you are in the situation. Right, Carrie? That's right. And it's really important, too, because if I found you can end up spending like lots of time doing nearly nothing, or you can really make things efficient and get a lot done. It's, I feel it's so it's really important, yeah. I feel like you're watching me or something like, you know, that I'm getting nearly nothing, nothing done. It's not. Yeah. It's I, because of my ADD, I just tend to be all over the place all the time. And I try to make lists, but I don't have like a flow. And I keep telling myself if I had a flow and I had a schedule, then, you know, things would probably run a lot smoother. It's that whole, um, thing of working smarter and not working harder. And I just feel like I work harder all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, to, let's just be really honest for a second. To be an author or a writer it is a very time consuming job. There's so many components that you have to be keeping going all the time that it makes it really hard. I think that the average person forgets, they often will focus on one or two things and they forget there's these other components that can't be missed either, that they also all have to grow concurrently which is really hard. Oh yeah. It's completely hard. Cause a, a lot of people, you know, go through, like, I just want to get the writing done and then I'll do the rest when the book is done. Um, which I don't really believe that you can do. <laughs> like, I feel like you have to grow your audience at the same time as you're writing your book, because, you know, then you get to the end of it and you're not, you don't have any way to sell it to mm, exactly. if uh, you don't have an audience. Yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll say who, among the million plus people who are also publishing at the same time. You're right, they have to happen at the same time. And in order to do that, that means you need to be on social media, you need to be doing other types of writing, you need to be engaging with your audience all the time so that they're ready to buy something when you get there. But that then means you have to be doing a lot of other things. Yeah, and that that for me is kind of the hardest part. Um, it, it, especially the social media. So, so many times I hear, you know, uh, successful writers and business owners say, you know, delegate the stuff that you don't feel like you're, you, is in your wheelhouse it, and that you're not, you know, having fun doing or whatever. And holy crap, is that social media for me? Like, and I thought I like social media. I spend most of my day on social media, but I do not want to schedule you know, 60 social media posts in a week for the whole month. And like, it's difficult. It's really hard for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is too. I mean, I've heard people say batch it. They'll often use that word, what they really mean, what they're meaning is they mean just exactly what you said, plan out a, uh, a, a bunch of posts that you plan to put out for that week. But that means a couple things. That means you have to know what you're, if you're going to be writing, what you're going to be writing, have it planned, have picked the photos, put together the little posts, you have to have the captions, then you, you there's a lot of work, a lot of pre planning work, I frankly, don't, I don't write that way. That's, I write what I feel in the moment, I'm, I have to be led emotionally to write. So I, I can't tell you what my next blog post is going to be about until <laughs> that moment when I write it, you know, so batching for me doesn't really work, I can batch maybe old stuff. I can go back and mm-hmm. say, oh, don't forget I did this before, but I can't, I can't prepare what I haven't done. So yeah, that's, that's one thing that some people do. And it may be for some of us that works great because we do have a schedule that we've planned out of writing. Yeah. So it's, it's different because I feel like you can, you know, normally you're picking a book launch date that's far enough into the future that you could actually plan your social media for book launches and stuff like that. Um, but when it comes to blog posts, I'm the same way I've tried to make calendars and I'm going to write about this specific thing on this day. And then I sit down and I'm like, "Mm, not today. Mm -hmm. And so, and I used to have like a flow, um, for when I was blogging every day and it was, you know, write the blog post, post the blog post, then make the Instagram post, put the link in the link tree. And it was kind of a flow. And I, I would do the whole thing before I wrote the next blog post. Right. But then I found that when I could write four and five blog posts in a day, when I was doing the whole flow of the Instagram and it was just Instagram, um, it wasn't like Facebook and Twitter and all these other things too, that I was only writing like three 
because you have to go and make the graphic and all these different things. And I was like, well, this is really cutting into my writing time. Right. And Instagram doesn't make me money. Right, right. Blogging right. does. So, and, and let me tell you another thing that makes it even more complicated. Something I learned just this morning is is that these different um, platforms have algorithms that are constantly changing. So, yep, yep. just like we know very well on Medium, that's constantly changing on us. So, for example, right now Instagram is rewarding Reels, and I had it happen this <sighs> week. I had it happen this week. I reposted something from TikTok without the label on it. And they pushed it to over 3,000 people in one day. I know. Yeah, and that's... Only know, so <laughs> they liked it and they rewarded me big for that. Um, so if we batch ahead all the time and we batch the way we always do, we're going to miss the changes that are happening. That's So that's another problem I have with it. it yeah, it really is. And it's like, um, you know, I started really strong on TikTok and then, you know, it wasn't feeling great and all that stuff. So I kind of haven't posted on TikTok for a while. But it is, it's Instagram's way of trying to keep up with TikTok. So, and that would require even more work. So while I can do a a well thought out TikTok in about 30 minutes, film, edit, post it, that, that's usually about what I can do. Now I got to worry about downloading it without a watermark and putting it on Instagram. And like, that just adds, like... I just add so much more. Like I'm exhausted just thinking about it. That comes back to that comes back to what a really good workflow looks like, don't you think? Is it Mm -hmm. it, for example, I could tell you exactly how to do how to um, make a recording of that really quick, drag it into Instagram, and I bet you in another five minutes you'd be ready to go. Because you could you can record Mm -hmm. even having all your captions in it, everything. You don't have to re-add that. The only thing you'd need to re-add that I would recommend is don't use the music from TikTok because TikTok's using commercial, commercialized, Instagram's not gonna like it, but Instagram offers over there its own music. So you can reattach it to a new musical score and then upload it immediately within a couple minutes later. So that to me is the trick of a good workflow is figuring out all these efficiencies. That's interesting that you're saying to change the music because Instagram uses commercial music. I put commercial music on my stories all the time, but what they do to get away from that is they have a little thing where it says the name of the artist and stuff like that. So that's actually a really smart thing to just add in the same music on Instagram so that the little label pops up or whatever. Yeah, Um, Yeah, you can go over there and they have their own musical sets. You can just pull Mm -hmm. up new music. Yeah, exactly. So in knowing that and you know having all these different workflows and stuff I almost makes me feel lazy because I'm like I just want to create the thing like I want to write the blog post I want to do the tiktok and I want somebody else to do all the other fucking work <laughs> like, and you know and fact, because I, I want to go back to writing another blog know, post or working on my you, book like, yeah and I've hired a virtual assistant before and you've actually worked as a virtual assistant I am I, one yeah I know you are I know you are and what what I've found and you can correct me if I'm wrong is that they can't do all of this for you either i mean they can do a lot of setups for you but they can't for example you still have to write your words you still have to it has to be you it can't be someone else uh, because the audience needs to have a relationship with you and that's what everyone's going to tell you everywhere that effective social media platform is an engagement with audience and it has to be between you and the other person no one can step in and do that for you Yes, they yeah. can do a lot of the grunt work around it for you, but they you will still be the one creating the content. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing for me is, um, you know, they suggest um, uh, that you write longer Instagram captions. So it's writing that copy that comes from me that engages somebody. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, I just want to hire somebody to write copy. It's copy. Like, I hate, like... <laughs> And you do point out a very good point. I am a virtual assistant. However, I do not do social media work. Mm. Um, I build courses. I help with newsletter automation. I answer emails. And I even enjoy answering emails better than (laughs) writing copy (laughs) for social media. Yeah, but I did learn something else from a, a, with a Instagram specialist today. And she was saying that necessarily long captions are it you need to discover what it is for you and it will be different for every person she also made a recommendation not to use blanket lots of hashtags that the Mm -hmm. algorithm on instagram has really changed recently really changed and as a result of it there's see that's the problem 
every platform is constantly changing. So what worked maybe last month isn't going to work what this month. So right now what's popular is Reels is where it's at. Uh, change your captions, try long, short, different. Just keep trying and see what works. Make, but it's gotta be an engagement. You gotta get people liking and commenting on your stuff. Um, and then the other thing she said is make sure your hashtags are niche appropriately. And she then also said, make sure that you're in the right pillar of Instagram. There's pillars inside of Instagram of fight based on subjects or genre. The way to know is to go to your, your little magnifying glass at the bottom and make sure it's showing material to you that of the material similar to what you're wanting to push out. And if it's not mm. go in there and start unliking, you're not interested to those that don't fit. That's well, I mean, that's kind of the same pre premise of TikTok. There's all these different versions of TikTok. And it's like I've landed in lesbian TikTok. Love it over <laughs> there. I have landed in, um, you know, messy mom TikTok. Also very much home to me. Thirst trap, which is fun to be at for a while. But then it's just like, what's the point? Exactly. So, you know, it's just kind of you. Yeah, you exactly. You, exactly. I didn't realize Instagram did that. I yeah. did find out a pretty funny trick um, from TikTok, oddly enough, about hiding your Instagram hashtag. So they're telling people now, don't even put hashtags in your in your caption and um, go down and leave a comment and hide the, or you make a comment first and yeah. then you reply to that comment because replies are hidden and you post all your hashtags. It still puts your, your thing in the appropriate hashtag, but it doesn't, when somebody looks at the post, the hashtags don't show up. So you could do 30 plus hashtags in a replied comment and they don't, it doesn't show up unless they hit, you know, show reply right. or view reply or whatever. Right. And I was like, oh, that's smart because I hate, I hate blanket. I hate looking at them. Like yeah. it doesn't even have anything to do with the algorithm. Instagram to me is all about aesthetics and seeing things that are visually captivating and stuff like that. And I like reading a good long caption, mm -hmm. but then when I get to the bottom and it's like 45, hat, I'm like, nah, go away. <laughs> like, I'm not looking at these. I don't care about these. These have right. no point, you know, so. Right. Well, in fact, they said, if you're using the same hashtags over and over, you're going to get dinged for that. That's not yes. a good idea. It needs yep. to be hashtags that are applicable to the posting and it needs to be not, not lots of them. You don't want to overwhelm your post with them. Yeah. And, and so, so when we talk about flow, what do you think, how do we help someone begin to find appropriate flow? Because we're just saying there's lots of different styles. Um, I think you and I are both agreeing that you must be engaging with social media, at least at least one or two. You need to be. You have to be. And and we and you need to be smart about it because I, I know you and I agree on this one. For me, for example, um, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense for me to worry about LinkedIn from my book. No. LinkedIn is not going to be the where that's going to buy my memoir. I don't need to fret about that. Now, if I was going to be doing something maybe related to business or related to social media or something, LinkedIn would be perfect. I should be over there and doing something. So we want you want to be smart about where you're at and who you're engaging with. Go where they're at. Yeah, um, LinkedIn. No, that's that doesn't fit into my platform at all those are people that have their shit together okay like <laughs> they're not interested in my shit right yeah you know they're yeah so um and yeah picking one that one and i honestly cannot emphasize this enough one just pick one that works or one that you like and make contact for that one thing and then put it everywhere. So this is, and this is kind of where I'm moving to. I don't really like Instagram. I use Instagram to post pictures of my kids for who I'm not really sure, <laughs> but you know, that's, you know, it's basically like an online photo album for me. I do have a work Instagram that's separate from my personal Instagram and I've posted on it like six times. However, I'm moving towards TikTok. You can post TikTok videos on Instagram. You can post them on Facebook. You can post them on Twitter. So why not for me make a TikTok? pull the watermark, post it everywhere so that it, you know, I'm doing something. Um, and, but I'm only concentrating on making content for one specific platform that I actually enjoy. Um, 
I think is probably the best advice I could give myself. And at this point, I'm not giving advice to anybody else because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just what I'm doing. Like, that's where I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I really feel like workflows, like take, okay, so take social media out of it and just talk about workflow, like in general. Mm-hmm. I think the first step in knowing how to design your workflow is being brutally honest about how you work. Yeah. Um, for years I have tried to be a wake up at 5 a.m. person. Yeah. And I will be for like three days. And then there will be one night where I'll get fixated on working on something and I'll work until two or three in the morning. And then my 5 a.m. you know, wake up call is not gonna happen. Hold on a second. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the same way. I think I agree with you. I think looking at your schedule and looking because every one of us has moments in the day or hours in the day that are peak efficiency moments. And then our lulls or lows where we're the least efficient and we need to figure work within those rhythms. For example, I know there's people who can't put a creative thought together after nine o'clock at night. For me, I come awake after six. I start to do better work in the evening. I'm on the other hand, you get me up in the morning. I'm really, it's hard work for me to be super creative in the morning. I'm just kind of a slow starter. It takes me hours to get going. I am too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I was doing the whole wake up at 5 a.m., it was wake up at 5 a.m., drink a little bit of coffee, work out. And by the time I got that portion of my day done, I was like, I've done so much. I've already worked out today. And then I'd sit on the couch and sometimes if my kids were taking an early nap, I'd just go back to bed. (laughs) Like this is not working out for me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it really is, um, spending the morning, getting up when my kids get up, spending the morning with my kids. Um, you know, when my daughter goes down and this seems so late to start your day, but when my daughter goes down for a nap at like 12 31 o'clock, then clocking in. Yeah. And, and working, from then until dinner, obviously there's interruptions because I don't just leave my kids alone, right. <laughs> but from then until, until dinner, doing dinner and bath time and bedtime, and then working for another four more hours, yeah. that gets me my eight, nine, 10 hours a day. And it's better for me. Exactly. <laughs> like I write better at night. Right. Um, and yeah, I think I just have to be honest about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm the same. I, in fact, I don't really start sitting down and doing any work until about one o'clock as well noon to one is when I start to hit it. I I wake up about eight. I usually don't get out of bed until 10, but I'm doing, do I do fit in a little bit of work there in the, in there. And and that is when I go through social media platforms and I respond to people, I engage with what's going on in other people's stuff. I don't post necessarily anything myself, but I comment, like, look, read, I read medium articles Mm -hmm. then we'll comment on those as well. So I will spend the time waking up doing that get out of bed, work out, eat. By the time I'm done, it's about one o'clock. I sit down and then I start working. See, that's about kind of the same thing. I'm a better writer when I'm reading. And if I can get up and drink my coffee while the kids are having breakfast or whatever and read, then I will have a better day. Mm -hmm. And so it, trying to force myself into somebody else's routine because you always hear about writers. I was just in a clubhouse and I'm going to call her out. And I listened to um, Jamie Albright talk about how she gets up at 5 a.m. and gets her words done. And then she's done writing for the day at like 7 a.m. And I'm like, I don't like you. Go away. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to hear it. Well, you um, could technically you, say you did it the day before, you know? You yeah. Be- like, my. <laughs> My son gets up in the middle of the night sometimes at 3 a.m. and thinks it's it's morning. Like, I'm not getting up at 5 and getting my words in. Right, right, <laughs> but, right. um, you know, and but that is kind of like the everybody says that you get up earlier, you get more work done. And for me, that doesn't work. I just makes me want to take a nap. Mm-hmm. So and I had to come to terms with that. Yeah. And I have to stop trying to make me something that I'm not. Right. Um. My routine will change. Obviously, hopefully this fall, my kids, my son will go back to school at that point. I'm hoping that my daughter will be able to go to daycare. This is all obviously pandemic, um, you know, with contingencies. But um, when that happens, then that means, you know, at at about nine o'clock, I'll be free to start my day. And I'm hoping that my time, I'll be able to shift 
you know, to going to bed a little bit earlier because I have to get up. I will be required to get up earlier, but it's just, you know, understanding who right. you are and when you work best is going to be the first step, I think, in making a good workflow. I do too. And the other thing that's kind of unique to me is that I get hyper focused. Mm-hmm. I'm autistic. So as a person who's autistic, I get hyper focused. So if I start working at seven o'clock at night or in the morning, I literally won't stop. I won't get my exercise in. I won't eat. I'll be sitting in that chair and I've done it nine, 10 hours in a row. I, it's, it's bad. So I know that isn't a good style. I have to do these other mm-hmm. things first so that then I can get my undivided attention and then have things built in that forces me to break. Otherwise I get too focused and I get lost in the work. See, and that's something that I struggle with too. And I have to be very careful that, um, come, you know, the time of when I'm supposed to be working, Mm -hmm. the first thing I do is go sit in my desk because I will, once my brain is active and it'll get hyper-focused on something. And a lot of times it's the wrong thing. It's like watching sister wives. Like it's like the wrong thing that I'm hyper-focused on. (laughs) I love your analogy. I'm just losing it. Sister wives. That's funny. (laughs) But yeah, I'm a sister watcher too. I know what you mean. Yes, exactly. Hyper-focused on something. (laughs) I used to think it, I, I used to think it, and God bless my mother who knew no different, but she would be, she would tell me, you're lazy. Like you don't do anything. And she doesn't understand. And she does now, now that we've lived together and I'm older and I can explain things to her that it is like the moment my brain switches on whatever I'm doing will, that's what my brain will want to do for the rest of the day. So I I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I can't stop. Right. Yeah. That's what happens for me. I can't. Yeah. Well, it's different for me. Thankfully the kids will stop me. Like somebody will need something. I will have to feed somebody. But if it was just me, if I was in your scenario, I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't do nothing. I would hyper focus on whatever the F I was doing until I would just, I fell asleep on my chair. Oh, and then if you you don't drink anything and you're dehydrated, you don't even need to stop going to the bathroom. See, it just Mm -hmm. becomes a bad, bad situation. Yeah. And so- (laughs) And, but knowing that about myself is really going to help me put good, you know, practices, good habits into place. And I love that we're having this conversation because I'm telling you things about myself and it's almost like a a self-realization. I'm like, oh yeah, I do that. Yeah. Okay. Here's how to fix it. I'm not looking to put in any new practices into place because I'm moving in two weeks. Um, right now, right now I'm just in survival mode. I'm right. in get shit done, move to another state mode. Right, right, right. But the good note is this is a perfect timing because as you get there and mm-hmm. you set it up, then you can begin to move into the schedule. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, talking through how to make good choices for lack of a better term to my work schedule and just knowing that this is what needs to get done. I, I, cause I haven't been feeling well and there's all this stress going on. I would say that my work level right now is like bare minimum. Mm-hmm. It's like everything that needs to get done in the next two weeks gets done and nothing extra. Yeah. But I really miss having the time and the mental capacity to do the extra. Cause the extra is what makes it fun. You know, working on my book is extra right now. Mm-hmm but that makes it fun. Like that's the shit I want to do. Right. So it's hard. I find the other thing that I've started doing and it really helps me. And that is to set my weekly goals. It could even be daily goals, but to set Mm -hmm. goals to actually say, and then the hard part for me is being realistic. I'm off. I am off and not realistic. I may say I want to edit a chapter, but I don't haven't recognized this chapter is a fucking mess. (laughs) <laughs> and take a lot of time to fix this chapter. We're talking maybe like a six, eight hour siege to fix the chapter. So it has to be goals that are doable. Maybe for me, it might be better. I will spend two hours revising and editing this chapter and then stop. Mm-hmm. Or I will put, I'm going to put so many posts out and then which post. And so I, it has, but I find setting the goals and then making them concrete so they're, I can define them as achievable that's reasonable. Otherwise I get back on to chasing something I can't finish. And that's not a good thing, but I find at least that helps me. It gives me direction. 
I stopped making goals for a legitimate reason. <laughs> I, I don't make realistic ones. And then when I don't hit them and I start to get behind and I start to get like, okay, for instance, at the beginning of March, I was like, I'm going to post three TikToks a day. I did really well for like, I don't know, like four days. <laughs> it was like, it was not that many. And then when I got behind by a day, I was like, okay, now tomorrow I have to make six. Uh, and then you get behind it another day. Okay, tomorrow I have to make nine or I'm not going to hit this number by this day or whatever. And I'm, if I make those goals and I don't hit them, then it becomes this overwhelming, like, oh my God, I have so much to do. Instead of just saying, okay, I didn't make three yesterday. Just make three today. Just make yeah. one today. Yeah. You know, my brain doesn't fucking work like that. And I don't know how to flip that switch. Wow. Of just you don't like, wipe it off. Like the day is over. Start off. Literally like tearing a day off the calendar. Start over. No, it's like this, everything just adds up and it's like this overwhelming. Okay. Well now I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to sit on the couch and watch TV because there's too much shit that I have to do. Yeah, I can and, see and so I just stopped and now I just make a list of these are the things that have to get done um, because I haven't, I really haven't been feeling good for like a week. Um, a lot of times I'll ask you, okay, what do you need from me today? Right. Because that's all the capacity that I have right now because um, I'm packing and all these different things. And so um, if I know, okay, I get these three day, three, these three things done right now, I know that that's about it. That's all I can handle. I'm done. Like that's it. Yeah. But no goals, because if I go to set goals, then I'm going to, you know, edit five chapters today and rewrite a blog post and all that stuff. And then when I don't get it done, I'm just depressed. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I think we're both saying in the same thing in a different way. And that is whatever you do, make it sure it's it's concrete and doable. It has to be doable. Like for me, don't say I'm going to revise a chapter because I may get into a chapter that needs eight hours. I can okay. say... And I think even, this is the other thing I think, I think that needs to be tiny, easily successful goals. Like say to myself, spend at least 15 minutes revising and editing today. Well, you and I both know I'm going to do more than that. Yeah, exactly. I like the- And put it over on Instagram. That takes maybe 15 minutes, maybe. But it's, it's the baby step goal. Yeah. That's what it is. It's, and I have had great success with the baby step goal. And I call it baby steps. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, What About Bob? I know, I love it. But I was obsessed with that movie when I was a little kid. Still am. Anytime I see it on TV, I will watch it. Um, love it. And but, so I um, refer to it as my client's baby steps. I just yeah. loved it. Yeah, I think I think it's, of exactly the same thing. Baby step, baby step. And baby step goals keep me from making really big goals. So- when you say it has to be a concrete goal that you can do to me in my head, it is completely possible for me to write 10,000 words in a day. I've done it before, but I can't go from writing nothing. Yeah. Words in a day. Like there has to be prep um, for me to do 10,000 words. Exactly. And so I'm baby step goal is I'm going to write one blog post. That is a baby step goal. If I write more than one, cool. If you don't blog on a regular, then saying I'm going to write for 10 minutes or I'm going to write for 30 minutes, I'm going to do one Pomodoro or whatever. That's a baby step goal. You'll probably do more. Once you're there and you're in the flow, you'll probably do more. But for me, if I'm like, I'm going to write five blog posts. Yes, I've done that in a day, um, but never coming from not writing a blog post one day, once a day for a week and then trying to move into five, like it's just, yeah, right. it's unrealistic. I don't write as fast as you do. I know that. You and I have even done writing sprints. I always come <laughs> last. Always, always, always. So for me, it wouldn't even be reasonable for me to say do one blog post. Right. I, I, that's why I use time. Time for mm -hmm. me is a much easier measurement to say I'm going to do X. I'm going to do X for X amount of time and then literally set the alarm. And then when it's done, ask if you can want to do more or you can stop and do something else. Mm -hmm. So I, but I think the point is for each of we're making is know yourself and make sure it works. Yeah. And I mean, give yourself a little bit of grace. I, I really thought that I was doing really well. Okay. So we've hit one year 
plus for this pandemic bullshit. And um, everybody was talking about pandemic fatigue and burnout months ago. And that I didn't hit that. Right. Me neither. And I really feel like it really like in March, it was like, yeah, the combination of not feeling well and hitting that burnout. And just, I feel like there are some days I get up and there is a wall and it's between me and my computer and I just can't get there. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm feeling some burnout too. It's really, everything I'm doing is a lot of hard work. A lot so, of hard understanding that some days you're mentally just not going to be able to show up. You do the things that you have to do. So like today I had to record this podcast. Did I want to? No, I love you guys, but I really just wanted to stay in bed. Yeah. I'm tired. And so, um, but I had to do it. So on my list of things that I have to do, I have to pack my vehicle because I'm leaving to go to Iowa tomorrow. Um, I have to record this podcast and I have to, you know, tweeze my eyebrows and do some of that kind of stuff. And so those are my three things for today. I have to get those done. When those are done, I'm going to play all the video games. Like I'm going to hang out with my kids and that's it. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, okay, I have to send out my newsletter today, but that's it. Once that's done, I'm, I'm going to read my book or do whatever I want, you know? Right. I think that's important. It is very important. So can I make, can I move us to the next step that I find really, really super helpful? And that is to take whatever we do and then make it as efficient as possible. Like for example, when you write a blog post, find a couple captions or quotes, or maybe think of another story. And that's what I, so when I do a blog, I'll finish the blog and then I'll start to figure out what I want to post elsewhere that ties into the blog. So I'll I'll write a, a tweet. I will write a brief caption and then I'll, I'll take the same photo I used for the blog and I multi-purpose it across all the other platforms and I do it all as one action. I don't see it as separate actions. I see it as one. So that for me makes it so that I don't say, oh, and now I've got to go do social media. How do I, you know, I just, I keep the momentum going and, and don't stop until that's finished. Do you do the stop same? A- stop attacking me. You're like, oh, social media. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> feel so attacked right now. <laughs> leave the leave the millennial alone. Oh. No, um, <laughs> it's very true. Okay, so when my social media flow was flowing, um, that's exactly what I would do. I would go find a quote. I would um, highlight that quote. And the great thing about Medium is if you highlight that quote and hit the little tweet bird button. Yep. It just does it all for you. But yep. if you want it to be a little bit more dynamic, prettier, whatever, you put that quote on a square image, um, you know, in Canva, whatever. Then you post that to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook with a link back to your article and boom, that's done. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the same thing, you can do the same thing with books. Okay. So it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little bit more, uh, extensive when you do it with a book because you can do things like um a 3d book cover with a with a background or whatever um or i've seen um authors just take an on they take a sexy looking unsplash photo with people that kind of look like their characters what do it again you missed it damn it where did i where did i uh, i've seen some authors do this Okay. So I've seen some authors do this, especially romance authors who put out a lot of books. Um, they just go and take an unsplashed photo because they're free. Um, the people kind of look like their characters. They take a steamy quote from the book, put it on there, and then they use that to drum up publicity, um, usually right before they do a, a book launch or um, like a pre-order. They'll start posting quotes from the book with the title and the link. And it's so easy to do. And that's something that you can do um, once you hit post-production, you know, even if your launch date is six months out, you can schedule those to start going out before your launch date. Um, so it's, that's a really easy flow for, for that works for books and blog posts, basically. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I find doing that just really saves time and I do it right away at the same time so that I don't have to go back later and then find the energy remember the article because I've already moved on. I'm already thinking of something else. So it's very hard for me at that point to go back. But, and I, I, there are lots of apps that help with this. 
I mean, there's things like co-schedule, uh, later. Um, um, I know some people use, I'm blocking on the name of it, um, shoot. Anyway, but we've been, we've been using called Hello Woofy. And it's, uh, what I like about it is it's cheap and it's, you pay by the year and it's one flat fee. So, um, yeah, it's actually been great. And it's one of the most, okay. So it's not the most intuitive program, but it, <laughs> it gives you the most options. Every thing I've ever been on caps you at like five accounts or 10 accounts. It, I'm pretty sure that it it's up to like 30 accounts you can have. And it's everything from WordPress to TikTok, to medium, to Facebook, to Instagram, like all these different things. Right. And, um, you know, you can put the app on your phone, you can have different calendars. So like Carrie and I both run the business social media and our personal social medias, um, on different calendars. And that's been great. Yeah, really it allows like more than one person to be on it. Usually you pay for extra. Every single person is an extra considered a separate user. You're allowed nine different users on this under one account, one a pro account. So I've been really happy and impressed with it. Um, again, it's called hellowoofy.com and her and I are not being paid for this either. We have no affiliate relationship no. with them. Yeah, I don't even think we have an affiliate link, but I will put a link to it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be great for when I finally get enough money to hire somebody to do all this crap for me. <laughs> right. yeah, then you can put them on as a team member. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what about, okay, so we've talked quite a bit about social media, but what about um, other workflows? So I kind of put marketing and social media in the same category. So newsletters and stuff like that. But what about your writing workflow? What does that look like? Well, what do you mean by that? Because I don't even think of writing workflow as a workflow. So oh, okay. Surprised, yeah, you surprises me. So same. Okay. Me. Oh, so um, I don't really have a time, like a specific time. I'm sitting down. I'm writing a blog post. But if I know that I'm blogging that day, or if I feel like blogging that day, um, I have a flow. And okay. so I do like um, an outline, which usually just ends up being like four sentences. Now it used to be way more in depth, but now it's like title, subtitle. I literally write intro and then write like a little sentence about what the intro is going to be. And then I do my subheads and then outro and write like what the outro is going to be about. So I outline and then I, because that makes me write faster. Taking the 10 minutes to outline an article means that I just go through it and write it really fast. And I'm not like hee-hawing around trying to figure out like, oh, where is this going next? Um, so I outline draft edit. And I used to copy and paste and put it in Grammarly and then read it aloud. And I've kind of slacked on the reading aloud part. And I've noticed that medium subscribers are so sweet. They'll copy or highlight and leave you a note when you have a typo. <laughs> well, I've been getting a couple of those. So I need to go back to Grammarly, read it out loud, um, and then post. And then even more, there's like more of a workflow when it comes to that, because I post it on medium and then I copy and paste it and I post it on news break. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I do have a workflow. It's very different from that, but yes, yes. So mine, uh, mine <laughs> is I, um, come up with an idea. Sometimes I jot a few notes down around the idea. Usually I feel so emotionally compelled by the idea, I sit down and I write it and I don't write with a title and I don't have a photo picked for it and I don't, I don't outline it ahead. I usually in my mind, I know the story, I know the point and I know what my takeaway is when I sit down and start to write. So I write from already having all that in my head and that then directs what it is. I do write inside of Grammarly and I'm allowing it to correct. So when I, it starts to see a problem, like this is too monotonous, so you already made this point before, I immediately correct right on the spot and rewrite that. So I edit and write at the same time. Um, and then I'll let it sit. And I usually let it sit a minimum an hour and maybe I'll take a walk or I may often, I'll, if it's a really big one, um, I may let it sit a day or two, come back, rewrite it again. And then I do use a second grammar program. I put it into prowritingaid.com. Not cheap, but I like it because it has a completely different view of the writing and it does mm -hmm. a very extensive analysis of it. Uh, it's looking for um, sentence lengths and um, reading level and all sorts of 
interesting things. It has a different little different take on the grammar. It finds things that Grammarly doesn't find. So I'll do that and then I'll read it aloud. And once mm -hmm. I read it aloud, then I start to find the put the headings in, I'll find the title and I'll find the photo and then I'm ready to publish. But yeah, so that's what I do to, to do a blog. It usually takes me, I'm, I'm getting, it used to take me five to six hours to do one. Um, I'm now down to where I can write maybe a 750, 000, or 750 word to a thousand word one in less than an hour. And um, I probably can do the whole whole thing maybe in a couple hours. Now, the other thing I do is then I post to news break sometimes right away, sometimes not. Maybe I'll wait a later to do that. But I also often will take it over to my own website and mm -hmm. post it there. Yeah, um, we do have very different. And I've known for a while that we have different processes when it comes to blogging because I can do start to finish in an hour. If it's something that I'm like, okay, this is what I'm writing about today. And I already feel, I don't know, emotionally drawn to it or whatever. Um, and so I don't pick my picture until the end. The last thing I do is copy and paste it into, um, you know, the medium draft space and then, you know, fix everything, um, to make sure it's formatted properly and add my CTA and all that stuff. Um, but I write, because I write on, for the words and I'm killing monsters while I'm writing. It's like playing a video game. Um, yeah, I just write it in there, but it is, it's very, cause that's like sprinting when you're timed and stuff. And so it really does push me. Um, and for me, I mean, I don't, I don't know about you. I know that you have posted a couple of times, like multiple posts in a day, but for me, my goal is always to do two or three in a day. That's yeah, always the, goal. always the goal. And I'm like, as efficiently as possible I can do two or three posts in two or three hours um and I just try to you know get that done um my process is actually not that different when I'm writing a book mm -hmm. um from how is that the writing from your blogging or that not different from what not from what I'm doing? it's not the, no it's not that different from my my blogging oh, um okay. I do a very extensive outline so that when I sit down I know exactly where the story is going um I'm not meandering through trying to find my way um it is it's more I mean it's I guess it's more efficient than artistry I guess um and it's just that's always worked for me in a way to where I could push out a lot of words in a month like I did 150 words in November or 150,000 yeah. words in November and I'm doing um, layering kind of like emotional layering in there and so I often will like I like I just discovered the blog post I posted a week and a half still sitting up as featured in two different mm -hmm. curated spots I and that idea I had, I sat on for days and it was a kind of controversial issue. It was on consent, informed consent with kids. That's yet the other thing is we tend to write about different things. I tend mm -hmm. to kind of do more educational slash personal stuff. So it takes some research too. And then I'm, yeah. So, so we just kind of different, we're similar <laughs> and there were supposed spillers, but yeah. It, basically, if it ha hasn't happened to me, I don't write about it. Mm -hmm. basically like mm -hmm. I mean I try to put links in there are a few things that it's like um I put links in for autism and right. you know if I'm talking about something that's maybe not like super common or whatever but that's literally just like googling you know autism spectrum disorder and picking the first Mayo Clinic right. whatever that comes right. up you know I don't do research yeah, um, I'm doing more kind of educational content. Yeah. And, and as a, and, and, and the other thing is kind of a blessing, but it's also a, a, a responsibility with a PhD. People tend to think I automatically am an authority. So I have mm -hmm. to make sure that whatever I say, I say appropriately has to be put into the proper context. So that puts a little more burden on me as a result of that. I find it interesting that you have a PhD. So people just instantly assume that you're an authority people read my shit and they just instantly assume i'm a mess mm. Woo! <laughs> like well, this yeah, is where we are an authority too. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah exactly yeah but it, it is a burden i have I, I then i have an obligation to make sure whatever i say i don't say like if i write about a sex addiction i need to be accurate about it because they're going to end up thinking i've i've been accused of being too casual you know I, i'll have people come after me if i'm not 
if I'm not being going into proving and backing up whatever I say. So I have to put a lot of, I have, I, mine have a lot of links in them. I have to do quite yeah. a bit of research for a piece. So I often will step back and think, okay, is there a piece of this that I haven't covered or there's an aspect that I'm missing and I, I kind of have to weigh it and move it from different, turn it from different ways. And, and I'm writing a memoir, whereas you and you're writing YA. And so again, they're, they're kind of different, um, different kind of information and, we're going in a little different, different spaces. It needs to be authentic, but you're telling a story, whereas I'm trying to like do all this nuanced about something that happened to me. Yeah. And I think that's also like very different in the fact that like, it's not emotional for me mm -hmm. to sit down and write about my characters in the same way that it is for you, obviously, because you lived it and that's very emotional and takes time to process. Right. I get all of my processing of things out of my system when it comes to blogging like that's where I'm processing my bullshit right and that's another reason where it's like there's no research to do it's just right this girl is just what she is <laughs> so right, right, right. it's it's different um when it comes to like having a workflow or having a writing flow so when do you have a specific time where you're like okay this is a better time of the day for me to do like social media versus this is a better time of the day for me to write. Or is it just when you sit down, you do what feels right at the time? That's how I do it. I do with what feels right at the time and then do that. But I have, like I said, I have the agenda. So it's on my, on my day's agenda. So I ask myself, okay, am I in the mood to right now do a TikTok or more in the mood to do a, my newsletter that got to be done today, or am I going to start working on the book? And then I'm based upon what feels right. I do. Yeah. I, there are a couple things like I'm usually when I first sit down, I'm usually best at writing, but it's also, it turns into whatever I'm doing when I first sit down is what I'm going to do all day. Yeah. So I try to do blocks of time where like, you know, Thursday we record. And then usually after we record is when I do like editing of the podcast and setting up, you know, the YouTube videos and all that stuff. Um, Cause that's just, for me, it's just, it's podcast day. That's, that's right. what we do on Thursdays. Um, so it just kind of really depends. And then there's days we have talked, not with the audience, but we have talked on the phone about how much I hate going to Walmart and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so like, I know the best time to go to Walmart is in the morning. So if I go, and I don't know if this is an ADD thing or maybe just a me thing, but I go to Walmart and then by the time that whole excursion is done and I come home, it's like my day is ruined. Like I'm mentally shot. I cannot handle anything else. So like, I know that if I'm going to run errands one day a week, then that's going to be like my day off. Like that's yeah. going to be the day that I can't write. I can't do anything. Cause right. Yeah, going no, outside I'm, is scary. <laughs> that, well, yeah. And I'm an, I'm, I'm a heavy introvert who's autistic. So mm -hmm. social engagement for me is exhausting. So if I, if I have a date, or if I go out and see someone for dinner or whatever, I either need to get the work done ahead and do it before I do it, or because I will be wiped afterwards, or I just need to take the day off as well. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I have to know that about myself. I have to be realistic that, yeah, that's doing for, for so for me, if it's, if, it's, if, if it's stressful and I'm mildly anxious, I'm gonna be extremely exhausted from it. And yeah, I-, I stuff. Yeah. I'm an introvert as well and um every year I get older it just gets worse <laughs> but um I just know that I there are some days where I'm just not I'm not on it's not gonna happen and I'm finding that that's really hard for me because I work seven days a week yeah so my goal this year with the move and everything is to have such a good workflow that I don't have to work on the weekends yeah. And that's been really, really hard for me. I feel guilty when I don't work on the weekends, but yeah. then I also feel guilty because I don't do anything with my kids. Right. right so right. workflow is about it, balance. It's, it is. It, it, it really does come back to balance. And I think it really comes, the other thing it comes back to is, and you used this earlier, having a lot of grace for ourselves. We really mm -hmm. need to have, give ourselves space, know ourselves, give permission to ourselves, forgive ourselves. Um, because if we come out of that place, we're going to be more productive because we are coming from a more authentic, rested, confident place instead of feeling guilted or overwhelmed or 
underperforming, all these other negativities really hinder the creative process because you want to sit down in that chair and be in the right space to be able to create. Yeah. And I feel like I'm a, sometimes I'm a procrastinator and I don't think it's, it actually, I think that's wrong. I don't think I'm a procrastinator. I think sometimes it's overwhelming and I don't want to do it. That's what I, I don't think yeah. that's procrastination. I think no. it's just like, nope, I don't have any, like, I don't have any spoons for that today, exactly. you know? And so, um, for me, it's, one of the things that's kind of cheated me out of that is setting myself deadlines before I actually have deadlines. Mm -hmm. Um, that gives me a grace period if I do have to take a, a mental health day or something. Um, and so that's something I do a lot in my VA work. Like if something is due on Friday, you know, I'm going to tell myself that I need to get it done by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Um, that way, you know, there is a little bit of a grace period there, but I don't think people realize that, there's a very fine line when it comes to giving yourself permission and giving yourself grace, at least for me. Mm -hmm. I will give myself a permission to take a day off. I need to be very careful that that doesn't become a week. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, in fact, I was going to say that. We, we need, each need to know our own bent. For some of us, the bent's going to be that we won't get started. And we'll yeah. just give ourselves permission day after day and after day to avoid it. Others of us can't stop. And then we need to give ourselves permission to, 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 for example, for me, if I, I've, I've made the deadline that I want to send to the beta readers, my book by May 1st, mm -hmm. well, I'm now into the section, the next two thirds of the book is rough. I need to do a lot. I last night I, I did outline, I, I started looking at what needs to be deleted, what needs to be expanded, what's missing, all of that. It's a lot of work. Can I do that amount of work in the next six weeks? I don't know. Now I get rigid. And then I start to drive myself really, really hard. So I need to give myself the grace. Like, Carrie, you work for yourself. Mm -hmm. Not the end of the world if you don't get it to them until May 15th or something. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, or even June 1st. So part of it for me is to understand that I drive and I get rigid. Whereas somebody else may say, you know what? I just never get into the chair. I never get my ass in chair. So maybe for them, they need to say, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I have an appointment with the chair and start. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I think for me, I'm almost that get it, get your butt in the chair person. Like I almost need that, but for me, it's just having a daily habit of, of three things, which is, you know, write a blog post, post it on social media, one other thing. So send your newsletter or whatever. If I have those three things, then it's easier to decide, okay, now I can give myself the rest of the day off or I can continue to work. Let's see how it goes. But for me, it's easier to just make sure I'm doing three things every day to stay on the ball because mm -hmm. it really does. It's so easy for me to be like, okay, I'm taking today off. I'm going to spend today with my kids. And it literally will become four days before I know it. And then I'm like, oh shit, I got to work. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's finding this balance. And that's the really hard part about working for yourself is nobody tells you to sit down in the chair and do some fucking work. Nobody. Right. And just like for you, nobody tells you to stop. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. In fact, I don't know when I've last had a day off. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe a year ago. I don't seriously. It's been a really long time. So yeah. Yeah, it, it, it both becomes problematic if we're not careful. So I think it, what we've really said today is we, you need to know yourself. You need to know yourself and to be on and no shame. There's no shame in that. There's no, cause there's no right or wrong way to do anything, but starting with knowing yourself begins to help you put into place your workflow for you. It won't maybe work for somebody else, but it can work for you. Yeah, that's exactly like this this the most valid point i think when it comes to designing what your days look like and how your business is going to run and what your workflows are is knowing who you are like knowing that i am not a 5 a.m person um because really when i get up at 5 a.m i just read and drink coffee and bullshit and a lot of times i don't even work out and i don't get to work any earlier i still like go to work at 10 <laughs> so why not wake up at eight like what is the point Exactly. Wake up at five to be tired and just drink right. a bunch of coffee. Like, no. Right. So no, understanding that about myself, I'm not a morning person, um, is, is, is great. But, um, I also know that if I get hyper fixated right. on something at night, 
I'm not going to go to bed. So telling myself, okay, we don't work past 10 PM. Right. You can go read, you can go play a video game, do whatever you want. You're not going to work past 10 PM because if you get hooked into something, you're screwed. You're yeah, going to be up all night. Two, three o'clock in the morning. Exactly. Exactly. And then your kids wake up and you're exhausted <laughs> the next day. Yeah, and I've done all nighters. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Yeah. Well, we we are um, so excited that we've been growing and that our subscribers, we have more subscribers and all. So we really hope to see you become a, to consider joining us as a writer's community, become a Patreon subscri subscriber. It's very inexpensive start, but we'd love to see you over there. And uh, we've got some exciting things planned for this year. So I'm happy about that too. We'll probably announce it in the next week or two, but. I am so excited about all the things that we are planning. And Carrie is right. When you um, support us on Patreon, it's as low as like $2 and you can right. come hang out with on the us on the Discord and come to our AMAs, which um, are, you know, just an hour to just hang out and talk with us. Um, yep. And those are only for discord people um so i'm really hoping to see some of you guys there and i'm really super excited we just have so much going on and i'm like biting my nails with excitement because i'm like when can we tell them like when can we call them <laughs> I, know, I know me too me too so yeah so this has been great i'm excited so let us know what you like uh, have you any comments or if you would like to hear us talk about other things let us know that that would be awesome we could add to that so thank you so much for being our listeners yeah, and I'm really excited. Um, next week, we're going to have Monica Leonel on, who is another uh, friend I met in Austin. And I'm really stoked to talk to her and let you guys meet her. So look forward to that. All righty. What's she going to talk about? Do you remember what that, that topic is? Nope. Oh, <laughs> we haven't nailed down a topic yet. So I'll edit okay, this out. Okay. Well, but, she, but on the other hand, how many? she's written a lot of books. She's a big author. Yeah, she's written under multiple pen names. Um, she has a whole nonfiction line just for writers under Monica Leonel. Um, and she is actually how I got into like Clubhouse and stuff. So I'm really hoping we can kind of touch base on Clubhouse with her um, and talk to her. She runs a room on there called Advanced Marketing for Authors. So awesome. Awesome. super excited to talk to her. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening today and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.